If you've come here looking for a cozy winter reading vlog, you've come to the right place. There's something magical about getting to see the snow falling through the eyes of your children. It's just non-stop whimsy at our house. Where is the other mitten? We've got a million of these and I can't find the other one. What do you mean it doesn't fit? We're gonna make it fit. Okay, your younger siblings are wearing your hand-me-down snow pants. I forgot that you also grew. I forgot to buy you new snow pants this year, so we're gonna wear two pairs of pants and call it a day. It's gonna be a another school cancellation, I can feel it. Oh no, it's a delay. Stay out there. I did not just spend 30 minutes getting you dressed so you could come right back in. You don't have to get hot chocolate every single time you come back in. Do not throw a snowball in their face, honey. Did they just bring all of the snow inside? Well, now she's crying. And this has the marshmallows in it. We don't have whipped cream. Or we have giant marshmallows. Or we have pumpkin spice marshmallows. No? Well then, no hot chocolate, I guess? Wrong answer. Well, we're gonna be late for school because I forgot to factor cleaning my car into going to school today. Hi, my name's B, and welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance. And heat this up again. It's gotten cold. You'd think I'd made this stuff up? Literally everything I just did happened in the last couple days. Hello, and welcome to my vlog for Once Upon a Readathon. This is a week in my life during the Once Upon a Readathon, and I can't wait to share it with you. Today is Friday, January 12th, and this evening I'm looking forward to hanging out, hopefully if I have the energy, with Kristen of Kristen Craves Books for her sprint. This month has been really busy. Last weekend I premiered my awards show, which I was editing up until like an hour before the show went live. There was one person that really wanted to be a part of it, but she was under the weather. She actually got up early so she could film and still be part of the show on the day that it was released. I apologize to anyone who set a notification like a week or two in advance and then never got notified because I uploaded a new video. I really wanted that person to be able to join and I think the video was better for that, but I do apologize for any inconvenience that that may have caused you. So between editing that and just getting everybody back to school, getting all the appointments made for 2024. It's been a really, really busy month. And I have to say, I'm embarrassed I haven't done more reading so far in the month of January. Looking at what I've gotten accomplished thus far on January 12th, we're like, what, basically two weeks into the month. I've read four books. Never Blow a Kiss, which I just loved, but it's not really for the readathon because it has nothing to do with winter. <laughs> it's a new historical romance coming out later in January. I also got to read Airy by S.E. Wendell. It's the first book in the Broken Wings duet. It was fantastic. Thankfully, it did get extra points with the Once Upon a Readathon. It was magical. I can't wait to read the next book in the series, but I'm waiting until next month, trying to spread out my S.E. Wendell for extra fun. I also got a chance to re-listen to Devil in Winter, which let's just look at the step back because why not? This is book three of the Wallflower series, and here we have Sebastian and Evie. I just love this. What are we doing? We're wearing a cape in the snow, like you do. And Mary Jane Wells does the most masterful job narrating that I've ever heard. She's incredible. And then the other book that I read, it's a novella called Snowbound with the Winter Lord, which was absolutely perfect again for the readathon and also why I kept reading it. I gave it two stars. She was getting all hot and bothered over the idea of his dear legs in leather pants. <laughs> and many more things, like he was part of the Fey Mafia. Line after line of what? It was bizarre. The author really did try to make it very interesting and threw just about everything at you in terms of action and suspense and all of that good stuff. So that's where we've been so far. As we're kicking off this vlog, I am currently reading four books. On any play I'm listening to, The Winter Bride by Anne Gracie. I have heard nothing but fabulous things about this author. I've really been enjoying her. I've been reading the ARC Canadian Boyfriend which comes out at the end of January. I have not been enjoying it quite as much. It looked like it was fun based on the title, the summary, and the cover. There's a lot of trauma that these two characters are working through, so I'm not having nearly as much fun as I thought. Tonight when I sprint with the gals, I'm gonna have to read more of it. I've also been re-listening to The Prince of Prohibition because The Veil of Violence is coming out at the end of January, and I cannot wait to listen to that for the first time. Oh, it's gonna be so amazing. And I have been trying when I have time to listen to to Icebreaker, which so far does not really seem like my cup of tea. Despite the fact that everyone has their own pants, they seem to be just wanting to get into other people's. Not a lot of emotion itself. So that's where we are. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm really excited to share this Once Upon a Readathon vlog with you. Let's go enjoy that readathon on Kristen Craves Books channel.
my my four year old is banging on. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And so I gotta go put her down. I'll I'll hopefully be back. Okay. So yeah. we'll start sprints anyways. All good. Here we are now. It's Saturday, January. 13. I'm gonna find some time to read today. We're doing a lot of just kind of housework, putting Christmas decorations away finally. We're gonna go to Target and maybe out to lunch. It's a cold winter day. We had some rain this morning and it's really windy. So um, we're not really going outside. We might do like an indoor playground or a trampoline park or something. I don't know, we'll see. But I also have a Once Upon a Readathon related announcement, which is Hannah just told us today, the unicorns are in third place. So that is a blow. It's crazy that we're we're nearly at the midway point of this readathon already. I'm also excited because I just found out there's a series that I love, hated, hate, love in Christmas time called Lake Mistletoe. And I read all three books in the series of high drama, high spice, high alpha males being alpha male way over the top in every kind of way, sometimes too much spice. But I liked so much of the other stuff that I went ahead and read it. The fourth book in the series comes out on the 15th. So I'm gonna add that to my TBR because it's also wintry. So it'll be perfect. <laughs> I hope, or it's gonna be terrible, I don't know. I'll love it and hate it at the same time. Today I need to read more of Canadian Boyfriend. I need to listen to more of Prince of Prohibition and I need to listen to more of The Winter Bride. So let's move on. Saturday night. I'm going to take advantage and I'm going to try to read the entire novella Claws in the Snow by Liz Peffel, which I got for free on her website. And I'm going to be reading on my phone thanks to Book Funnel. I loved her grumpy alien Santa Christmas novella. So I was eager to try her Bear Shifter book and see if Bear Shifters are for me or not. This will be perfect because it's got snow in the title and on the cover. It's very wintry. And get some more points for Team Unicorn. Anyway, I just finished Claws in the Snow. It took like about an hour for me to read. And honestly, okay, let me just say it. If you like werewolves, you'd be fine with a bear shifter. It's the same thing. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it would be anything else. I guess it makes sense, really. It's just instead of wolf, we got bears. And now I can't believe I'm saying this, but yeah, I would read a bear shifter. Why not? And as you see here in my paranormal romance vlog, there's plenty of bear shifters out there. That was just Christmas that I was showing there. Anyway, so this was really cute. I loved the aspect of these two people are so mature. We have two people that are empty nesters. His wife passed and her husband was really bad and was a bear shifter. And now she just wants to have a hallmark type Christmas and now that she finally has a job where she can afford to do that she wants to do it and she's also really experiencing feelings for the other bear shifter in her life which unfortunately happens to be the brother of her ex-husband so they fought feelings of attraction for a while she's been divorced from the brother for like 15 years this had a lot of danger in it aside from attraction which was really cute the brother comes back and so there's some bear shifter fighting that goes on and some protectiveness. There was some spice once it got to like the spiciest element, which was saved for the very end. It was vague, which I was totally fine with. I thought it was really sweet. These two adorable people that thought, you know what? I've put in the time in my life, raised my kids, and now I'm ready for just love. And apparently bear shifters, you can only have one true like soulmate. But he said, I could still find love. Oh, there goes my tea. Hold on, I'm making more tea. Okay, I'm back, sorry. I am officially a Liz Papel fan. I think that's the moral of the story. So there you go. Well, 
I'm exhausted, if you couldn't tell. My seven-year-old got up at three, could not get back to sleep, so I've been up since three, but the good news is I've gotten a bunch done, including finishing Canadian Boyfriend. There were elements of it that were great, but also things that I really didn't like. Coming out January 30th, it hinges on the idea that this gal meets our guy as a teenager, just once briefly in a coffee shop, and she kind of fixates on him. She tells everybody that he's her Canadian boyfriend, despite the fact that she doesn't know anything other than his first name. But then the rest of the book, she calls him Mike Martin, like his whole name, which was weird. Anyway, she writes letters to him. It's basically like diary entries, just about her life. And 12 years later, he comes into her life. His wife has died and his daughter sees Aurora, our heroine, as the only person who gives her happiness. So he decides to invite Aurora into their lives. And she then becomes like a live-in nanny sort of, but not really. It's kind of awkward. The love scenes were also extremely awkward. It baffled me what the author chose to leave in versus take out. You know, they're falling for one another, but a lot of this book is about therapy and coming to terms with things that have happened. A lot of the same things are covered over and over again. It was really deep though, and there were a lot of highlightable lines, but not a great romance per se. They do find love, which is nice. The way that she tried to make the letters to him that she wrote when she was a teen, like a thing, the way that it was supposed to ruin everything, it just seemed kind of silly. The premise is all hinging on that, but it was, it didn't feel like it was important. It just didn't quite work. I see what the author was going for. Now that my husband's up, he's taken all the kids to breakfast with his parents. So they're out at breakfast. I'm going back to sleep. Maybe when you see me next, I'll look less scary. Well, it feels like it's super late again and it's 9.18. Everybody else has been asleep for a while. So I got a chance to listen to more of Icebreaker and I can't do it. I can't. There's nothing swoon worthy. There's a lot of excitement and the chemistry is certainly there, but it doesn't seem like much else. The enemies to lovers thing could be fun. I think it's the end of the road for me and Icebreaker. <laughs> Yes, it is snowing and we lost power there for a bit. Two of my three kids were up at like 4 a.m. So, especially not being able to download anything new, I wound up listening to more, believe it or not, Icebreaker. And now it's actually becoming sweet. So it's getting better. So maybe I will give it a shot. Although again, like the love scenes so far are not to my taste, but maybe they're gonna get much better because they're a little too crude and have nothing to do with any kind of emotion at all. And of course he's saying good girl, which drives me crazy. We're gonna see if it gets better because now I'm mildly invested. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm halfway through. All right, I'm tired. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna take a nap in a minute, but I just wanted to give you a quick update because it's a new week. It's Monday, it's Martin Luther King Day. So because it's a new week, I'm starting new books. I have Life and Death, which is the gender swapped version of Twilight. My friend Julie and I are starting our Twilight read along with this book, which in hindsight, I'm like, well, maybe this wasn't the best place to start, but we weren't really sure where to put this book in our order. And it felt like putting it anywhere else would kind of mess up the flow. <laughs> We're just starting with it. I don't know if it's the best choice, but it's what's happening on the 27th at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes, I'm plugging it. We're gonna be doing the Life and Death live show. I'm also starting the arc When Grumpy Met Sunshine, which unfortunately does not have very good reviews already, which is not a great sign. It doesn't come out until February and the people that requested it would have been excited to give it a good rating. So when it doesn't already have a great rating, it makes me nervous. <laughs> so 
<laughs> I try not to look actually when I put on Goodreads what I'm going to be reading because I don't want to see what other people think but I accidentally saw the rating and I was like oh no. <laughs> This is about a footballer who is actually in America would be known as a soccer player who is grumpy needs to do his memoir and he has kicked 17 other ghost writers off of the job because he can't stand anyone. But now he and Mabel, it looks like, are going to potentially hit it off. It's very strange. It's very weirdly written and the writing is just very different. Sometimes I'm like, what is even happening right now? It's confusing. I'm continuing Prince of Prohibition and then I'm gonna see if I have any time left to do any more novellas for the readathon. Gotta rack up those points where we can. Anyway, okay, I need a nap. So I'll be talking to you soon. So who would have thought that I would have bought this, the fourth book in the Lake Mistletoe series after detesting the first one, but they just got better and better. So I just spent $2.99 on this. <laughs> Another novella that I'm planning on reading for the readathon. I actually really like this character. Very excited, believe it or not, who would have thought? Angelica Frankenstein makes her match anyone? We're at the movies because we have nothing else to do. We're gonna go see Migration. I don't know what that is. I might end up reading if my husband lets me. Well, it has been a typical snow day. Uh, mostly just hanging out with the kids, keeping them occupied, lots of snacks, lots of hot chocolate. They did play. I was taking a nap for it though. <laughs> So I missed it and my husband didn't film all the magic and I caught the tail end when they were throwing snowballs in each other's faces and making one another angry. Oh, the wind is kicking up. Okay, it's cold out here. This is not gonna take long. But I was editing today. I was going to film my book haul while everybody was in school because my four-year-old actually goes to school on Tuesday mornings, but no school. So, and we're wondering what's gonna happen tomorrow. The sun's actually out. So I don't, I don't really know what to expect for tomorrow. I bet it's gonna be a delay. But what I did realize as I was editing early, early this morning, I never told you about the Winter Bride that I finished two days ago on Sunday. It was tremendous. I gave it four and a half stars. Initially, it sort of felt like something I could not sink in to very quickly I realized this author is hilarious and she was saying some things that were a little like oh my <laughs> like clutch of pearls I mean not terrible but like a little bit like naughty to the point I just kept giggling or my mouth would drop open the more I read the more I started to fall in love with the characters I really started to get into it and now I understand why everybody's going crazy over it and I'm definitely gonna read the spring bride in the spring which couldn't feel further away right now it's a beautiful winter day though. We are having a good time. I think we're gonna go through toys and decide what can go. My kids are 10, seven, and four. And we still have lots of toys that are appropriate for under four. So I think it's time to start purging, which makes me sad, but it is what it is.
So I spent the afternoon cleaning out our family room of all those toys and the kids were interested at first and then they lost interest. So I wound up listening to all of the rest of Icebreaker and it was actually quite good. The first 30% I thought was absolutely terrible, hence the DNFing. I didn't like any of the characters. It, I don't like the word smut, but there was just smut. I mean, it was just people getting into one another's pants. It was gross. I didn't like the way they talked during it. Like I just couldn't stand it. And then it was a complete 180. The characters started to develop feelings for one another. We get to see how, how nice all of these hockey guys actually are, how much they all care for our heroine Stassi. I was just, thoroughly impressed by the growth of these characters. We have two characters, they're in college. They're forced to sort of share an ice rink after some damage is done to the other ice rink. So the hockey players and the figure skaters have to get along. And we have these two enemies that become lovers. I mean, just lovers. They're like frenemies. It's, it's enemies to lovers, but it takes a while for them to actually become lovers because it's just lust. It's just them using one another, I would say at first which they were both per perfectly fine with because they're very free and open, as was everybody else. But uh, it was amazing after you saw them just develop a fondness for each other. I was fond of all of them. I never cared much for her friend and especially her skating partner. But other than that, the characters were really endearing and the links that they went to, to be there for one another, to support one another. She's got some issues with body image and eating because of ice skating and some gaslighting by her skating partner and so we work through that. Nate, they become boyfriend and girlfriend. He is so supportive of her. I just thought it was so beautiful the way they handled so many situations with such maturity and kindness and respect. And who in the world in the first 30% would have thought I would have said any of that? Right now they're calling a two hour delay for tomorrow, which would mean my daughter actually goes to school earliest at 9.30 and then the boys don't go to school until 11. We'll see what happens. So please ignore that. <laughs> my husband decided to take over this morning since he was home. So I got to film my book haul. I'm so excited. I got to haul all of this and you're going to get to see it on Sunday. So I'm really excited because now I have to edit all of it. But anyway, it was really fun to do and I'm still tired, but I just did the concealer. <laughs> So much concealer. At some point, I'm gonna get back on a sleep regimen. My seven-year-old is finally sleeping again, by the way. It was the flannel sheets. I think he was too hot. But let's talk about what I'm reading today. Where well, there's not a whole lot of other things to do that aren't chore-related and kid-related. I've gotta to listen to a ton of Life and Death in order to get it read before I have to return it to the library. Plus the live show is next week. So I've got to get on that. I spent so much time listening to Icebreaker that I'm way behind now. I can't believe it. I still can't believe that I liked that book as much as I did. I think Albie of Albie Reading Romance and I might actually buddy read it in the summer, the second one in the series, because it's a summery summer camp book. We'll see. I don't know. I'm also 42% now into When Grumpy Met Sunshine and I really want to like it. I really do, but I really don't. The writing is just, it's just talking and talking and it's kind of boring and there's so much cussing. I'm like, why? I mean, I don't mind some cussing, but it's so much. I just don't like the writing at all. And it's not even just about the cussing, just any of it. I honestly think that it is so British. I don't mean to say that in a bad way. As an American, a lot of the references are going right over my head. I almost feel like they shouldn't offer this up to American audiences to review because maybe we're missing things. I don't know. She's his ghost writer. The tabloids are going crazy. And so they've decided the only way to handle it is rather than just to admit that he has a ghost writer. I guess you're not really supposed to admit that. Anyway, that he's saying that she's his one true love and how dare anyone say that just because she's plus size that she's not good enough for him. I'm not really enjoying it. So, oh, well, moving on. In the world is my hair doing? Was it doing this the entire haul? Oh no. editing and I'm eating some dinner. Soba noodles, eggplant, tofu, asparagus, yumminess going on. But as I was editing, it occurred to me, I didn't update you on my day. Listen to tons of life and death. I'll tell you more about how that's going tomorrow. I went to get my nail polished removed because it's gel. So it takes, it's a little bit more difficult. And I went ahead and brought my four-year-old with me because I thought it would just take a mo you know, just a couple minutes. I thought she'd find it fun. She's always asking me where I go when I get my nails done. And they were so sweet to her. They brought her candy and they had her sit in a chair and for free, they did her nails. And I'll show you a picture. I'm not gonna show her face full on because I always feel guilty doing that. But she started chewing on her 
her nails after we got home. So I had to call poison control, make sure she'd be okay. And then I had to drive to a Walgreens at like 7 p.m. in the ice and dark to get nail polish remover because I was so afraid she was gonna try to chew the rest of them off because they said a couple nails would be fine, but I didn't want her to do one more nail. <laughs> So I should have seen that coming. This is what happens when you get a four year old's nails done. I didn't get my nails done for the first time until I was getting married. <laughs> now my four year old has gotten a manicure. Oh my. Well, it is Thursday now, January 18th, and tonight I have my reading sprints with friends. So that'll be really fun. I've made some fun games to do. I still have to practice my tech savviness. We'll see how it goes. But it's been a really busy day. I got up with my seven-year-old again at 4 a.m. I think during this week of a vlog, I've gotten to sleep in until like 5.30 in the morning once. Other than that, I've been up at three or 4 a.m. every single day. It's exhausting. I need my children to sleep. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I got to edit all of my book haul, so that was good. And I got to work on an intro for this vlog, which was really fun. I had a fun idea based on everything I've been experiencing the past couple days. And then I picked up my daughter from preschool. And then we went, we hung out with our old teacher friend in the preschool for like an hour. And then we went to, as you saw before this, a library book sale, which I only took video very briefly because it's kind of cutthroat in there. And they think it's weird and they're watching you. And when you're filming, they're like, what are you doing? So it feels weird, but I just wanted to take a quick little video. That was extremely successful. My daughter and I both ended up getting a lot of books. <laughs> it was really fun. And now I'm going to pick up my boys and I'll have just enough time to get some chores done around the house and get ready for the sprints because the sprints are in exactly three hours. More snow is expected tonight and into the morning. So I will bet you anything that tomorrow is going to be another snow day. All right, now it's time to get busy and get ready for those sprints. I love a good brother kind of romance, like forbidden brother. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, how fun. Awesome, Joanna. Good brother. Okay. <laughs> She's like, no. This has been lovely. I'm so thankful that Joanna and Tara and Crystal came on with me. Just like old times. So fun. I'm going to do this again in some way, shape, or form. looking a little less scary, but oh well. My husband's not feeling well this morning. I'm hoping to do April sprints tonight if you're watching this on Friday, January 19th. Hopefully I'll see you tonight on April's live stream. This has been a really fun week and it is currently snowing even more. We have a snow day today, so we're all just gonna read and hang out and probably go through all the toys in the basement now. I still have to finish this weekend the rest of life and death. I'm also going to need to finish When Grumpy Met Sunshine, which is actually growing on me. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying it. whatever it is that you're reading, whether it's snowing or not. Until next time, thanks so much. Take care. Bye.